Well, hello there, and you join us here today to talk about single watch collections, specifically Seiko. Tom, have you ever considered collecting something all from the same brand? I have not considered it, but I think it can just happen organically because there are just brands that just consistently deliver great watches and you think, I've got a Seiko for my collection, I don't need any more. Wait, what's this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right actually, it can happen completely by itself because by the process of elimination on every type of watch that you're looking to buy, you might just so happen to end up on the same brand anyway. And I think for many people that's happened with Seiko because of the enormous quality to cost benefit that you get there. So I thought, Tom, why don't we both assemble a three watch collection built around Seiko, pitch them to each other, and then, dear viewer and listener, you can decide who chose the best Seiko watches for their single brand collection. Are you ready to go, Tom? Yes. Then we'll begin. So I'll begin with a watch from the Seiko 5 series. Now this is Seiko's most affordable collection. Uh, this one is 300 pounds and um, you can get a little bit of military style going with your Seiko 5 sports with the Flieger. Now this is a 39.38 millimeter stainless steel case. 39.38, it's gonna probably wear about a 39.4 millimeter there. Um, <laughs> originally created for pilots and navigators, it's robust and reliable, and it's got all of the numbers on the dial, but it's still highly legible as was required for pilots and navigators. It's got the automatic 4R36 movement, day and day, and a choice of styles. Uh, there's a black dial with a mesh bracelet, or perhaps blue with orange accents on a bomber jacket style fabric strap, or my favorite, this black with bright orange. You get very functional vintage vibes blended with a street style. It's like a hipster's paradise, Andrew, it really is. Tom, this is a surprisingly aggressive color combination from, from you. you. You're usually more about the kind of the soothing natural tones. What drew you to the, the bumblebee-esque black and orange? I think every now and then you've got to have a bit of excitement in your life. And I think Seiko, especially the Series 5 range, it, it offers you that. It says, look, you too can be cool. <laughs> and I, I really appreciate that offering. Tom, I too want to be cool, but I'm going to go in a very, very different direction because this is the Prospects Heritage Turtle 1968 reinterpretation. It is based on the 1968 6105. The first Seiko dive watch was made in 1965 and this came shortly after with improvements that were uh, based on the requirements of soldiers fighting in Vietnam and places like that. They couldn't afford the Rolexes and all the expensive dive watches and the other stuff on offer at an affordable price was too, well, crap. So Seiko was like, aha, and they updated their dive watch to this model. This is 41 millimeters in steel. It comes with the 6R35 automatic caliber, 200 meters of water resistance. And you might be wondering, why is it called the turtle? Here's my theory, because the crown is just, just poking out an uncomfortable amount. But this, this style uh, was actually made famous by Martin Sheen in the movie Apocalypse Now, where he wore a 6105 Ooh. with this turtle case shape. But I do prefer the idea that the actual watch is turtling that crown. But 860 pounds, <laughs> it's a lot of heritage. It's a lot of dive watch. It's a lot of cool classicness uh, for less than a less than a thousand pounds. Yeah, it's cool. That looks like a serious watch. For my next choice, I've gone with the Prospex Alpinist 1959 reinterpretation. So this version of the Seiko Alpinist, uh, released in 2021, bears closer resemblance to the original Alpinist from 1959 than the other regular Alpinist that we all know and like. Now, if you were thinking, excuse me, was the original Alpinist marketed for Japanese Yamaoto Co Mountain Men? Then the answer is yes, yes it was. Ah. But I really like this uh, reinterpretation on the original take. Um, I love the, the sharpness of the hands there and uh, the quarter hour markers and how they've been bisected and trisected even at the uh, the 12 o'clock marker there. The inner minute track and the general furniture of the dial is very nicely laid out and it's very appealing. There's an automatic 6R35 caliber inside and it's 700 pounds. There's also this lovely mystic forest edition with a hazy 
blue green textured dial and a washed out orange second hand it feels very very magical uh, now it does say it's exclusively available to boutiques but i have added it to basket and got all the way to the end of the checkout um and it seemed to be fine but i wasn't willing to drop the 700 pounds on it to see if it's actually boutique only but um try it yourself if you fancy it that is a tasty watch mm. i didn't know they made this um, it, I think it would be even nicer without the date and without the big X-Men logo in the middle. But overall, what they've pulled together there is like beautiful proportions. I love the kind of the chunky thickness to the case yeah. and the lugs. And then like you say, those markers, I really want to take a slice of one of those markers and just eat it with some cream. <laughs> I think, yeah, that is definitely an option. I, I quite like the X-Men logo. I think that's all right. Maybe they could have reduced the size, but I think that's just pushing the the very limits of literature that you can print on the dial, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely there. And it's definitely the <laughs> only thing on there that's printed in bright white. But never mind. Yeah. You can't have it all. No. That is, unless you were to get the Prospex Speed Timer 1969 Recreation. Now, Tom, we have seen some previous watches in this conversation that are called Reinterpretation. This is different. This is a recreation. Oh. So you might be thinking then that this is an accurate recreation of the Seiko 1969 Speed Timer, which is, by all accounts, the first automatic chronograph. Okay. Not the Tag Heuer Breitling Calibre 11, not the Zenith El Primero, but this Seiko from 1969. Hey. So you would think that this would be a recreation of that watch, but you would be very, very wrong because this is entirely different. Uh, <laughs> the original was an automatic chronograph. This has the V192 quartz solar powered movement. So couldn't be more different if it tried. Yeah. And it also looks absolutely nothing like the original speed timer. <laughs> this is 39 millimeters in steel. Um, you get a second per day accuracy from that quartz solar power movement and of course no battery change is needed so again one up for the common man who doesn't have to go to Timpsons to have his battery replaced. £590 for this watch I think even though it looks nothing like the original speed timer it is a very very attractive watch that I have come very close to making a impulse purchase of at the airport several times. Uh, yeah it's a lovely watch. Yeah I am a continually baffled by Seiko's fast and loose rules on the words recreation and reinterpretation. But they do love their early 60s period, don't they? Who doesn't? Yeah, it's when all the best stuff was. Yeah, there's the Beatles, Formula One was at its best, Austin Powers, all of that good stuff. Yeah, Seiko was kicking off. I really like as well with this, it's not just a monochromatic watch. As you look closer, you see the, the loom has some mm, 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 to it, some of that faux aging. And even the subdials have a little hint of blue in the sunburst that just give it a little kick of interest. Yeah. I can think of a number of other different chronograph manufacturers who could learn a thing or two from this little spice of colour. <laughs> 590 quid though. It's creeping up there, but it's not bad. Talking about creeping up there. <laughs> uh, this is the Presage Craftsmanship Hakuji Arita Porcelain watch. Um, Hakuji meaning pure white, as in pure white enamel dial. Now, what techniques do they use to make the dial, you ask? <laughs> That's right, traditional Japanese ones. <laughs> this isn't your regular Boy Scout enamel firing, Andrew. This is a multi-stage, multi-layer, master artisan enamel firing here um, in the good old-fashioned Japanese way. And the result is this beautifully clean and simplistic dial that's just like a, a shallow pool of enamel goodness. On it, you've got these lovely blue printed Roman numerals and the blue hands, the second hand with the crescent moon shape on the end of it. Inside is the 6R31 automatic with manual winding movement. And it's just liquid watchmaking, Andrew. Uh, that's all there is to it. £1,550. If that's perhaps too clean and too simple and too elegant for you, you can perhaps lash Seiko a couple of extra hundred quid and pre-order one of these new limited edition bad boys coming out in June, I think, uh, like the Laurel Enamel, commemorating 110 years of Seiko and their first ever timepiece, the Laurel. It's got that same enamel dial, but this time with loads of retrograde functions, limited to just 1,500 pieces 
very exciting lineup in the Presage Craftsmanship Collection there. Um, and if you're willing to spend a little bit more. For those who don't know, enamelling can happen in two ways, hot and cold. Cold is just a chemical process, it's a liquid, it's the same kind of material they might do an enamel bath with, they paint it on and it cures and goes hard. It creates a nice luster and sheen, but to get the real best you have to do it in this fired way with this ground up porcelain glass that's applied in layers, baked, more layers baked to get a really deep sheen, and every time they bake one of those layers, you run the risk of breaking, cracking the dial. So it's a very, very low yield, high intensity production process. Sure, I thought you were going to say the two ways that in which you can do enamelling are successfully and unsuccessfully. <laughs> successfully, unsuccessfully in the cheating way. Yeah. <laughs> in this case, they're made by master craftsman Hiroyuki Hashiguchi. And I can imagine him sat in his Zen studio overlooking what can only be the most beautiful scenery in the world to inspire the pure whiteness. And he produces these dials one at a time. Most manufacturers, even the big boys, will outsource this process because it's so hard. So you can imagine when they come to collect the dials that Hashiguchi-san has created and the, the courier says, great, off I go to take this to the Seiko factory. And uh, Hashiguchi uh, says, uh, so, uh, so, sorry, what? <laughs> where, are you, where are you taking those? To Grand Seiko, did you say? No, 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 no. Seiko. Oh, because I thought <laughs> I put all the effort in it and they were going to go in a Grand Seiko. So I find it crazy that they are in a Seiko. Yeah, what you're getting for the money is amazing for that craftsmanship, for that level of artistry. Tom, I'd like to continue the turtling theme, if I may, because this is the King Seiko Kamiado Kiko Limited Edition. Now, I know I said King Seiko, but I thought that because the price range isn't too far off the normal Seiko that I would be able to get away with it. And I think when you see this watch, you will appreciate my, my stance. Now, Kamido is the island where King Seiko was originally founded. And you might remember that King Seiko and Grand Seiko were two separate companies created by Seiko to compete with each other to create the greatest watch in the world, which they achieved. They beat the Swiss with a mechanical movement that was the most accurate ever. This great kind of camaraderie they created with the competition also actually resulted every time a watch was created between the two, they would compete internally and the winner would share their secrets with the loser so they could both progress, which is just a fantastic mentality and, and creates a very uh, healthy competitive environment, I think. But King Seiko specifically were based on Kamido, known as Turtle Island, because it was the shape of a turtle. Ah. And so for this limited edition King Seiko, they have chosen to slap on a very turtle-like dial texture there in a kind of a Coca-Cola-ish brown. Um, it's 37 yes. millimeter steel case, 6R31 automatic movement, limited to 1200 pieces. I think the shape is really nice. I love the dome of the crystal, but that dial especially feels like it's starting to have a little nibble of uh, Grand Seiko's turtle soup. Yes, it's very cool, isn't it? I like the smoky uh, gradient uh, around the edges there. And um, you say turtle, I, given the, the blockiness of the, the case shape there, feels quite 70s. You've got sort of, looks like a stainless steel Jenga going on in the bracelet. I feel like the dial has, has got a very sort of 70s-esque pattern going on there. It reminds me of the carpet in The Shining. <laughs> it's really cool. It's the texture that you spend a lot of time and effort sanding off of your ceiling. <laughs> yeah. Tom, this is uh, quite an expensive watch for our lineup overall. It's £1,690. But here's something that might sway you. It does come alongside the metal bracelet. It comes with a free leather strap as well. Oh, I thought you were going to say torch. Uh, no torch. I'm pleased to tell you that that is not a turtle leather strap because I think that would be a little bit uh, disappointing. That'd be sad. But you do get two straps. Yeah, it'd be sad. Poor little turtles. Oh, that's great. Yeah, cool. Um, I think that'd look great on a strap, wouldn't it? In fact, it does. Nestled in the moss on Turtle Island. Yeah, that's that's a hell of a watch. I'm really intrigued by the King Seiko line. Um, and this is, I think this is the best one I've seen. It is certainly a stunner. And I think all the watches that we've looked at here today have their own merits. But dear viewer and listener, it's really down to you to determine whether or not you think me or Tom came up with the better selection of Seiko watches. I'd say they're all winners, Tom. 
different strokes for different folks, but really what we're highlighting here more than anything is that Seiko has an enormous range of incredible watches for very, very competitive prices. Excellent, yeah. Um, yeah, you can't go wrong um, unless you sort of linger on their website too long and impulse buy. Um, but you'll be happy at the end of the day anyway. <laughs> Dear viewer and listener, tell us in the comments which single make collections we should put together next time. Please do like and subscribe as well as it really helps. And uh, goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>